corsets. They come in many different shapes and sizes, and they have many different construction methods. But there is at least one thing nearly all of them have in common. They all have some sort of support. Whether it is fake whalebone, cording, or even cable ties, they all give some sort of support to a corset. But seeing as there are so many of them, when do you use which? Well, that's what I'll be discussing today. So without further ado, let's head right in. I used flat steel boning in my modern fashion corset. On the back, next to the eyelets, I have sewn in a channel in which we have inserted the flat steel boning. This is because we want to keep the row of eyelets as straight as possible. But when you look at it from the side, you can see that it does curve slightly. That's what flat steel is good at. It keeps things straight, but it can curve slightly. This is, however, quite sturdy, so you can use it to force a certain shape. In this case, keeping the back straight. So that's where you will see flat steel used most often, next to openings. For example, the busk in this is basically flat steel with hooks and eyes. You also have spoon busks, those have a different kind of shape, but they generally do the same. Flat steel does also weigh a bit, so if you have a corset that's mostly straight shapes, that's fully boned, I would still not advise to use flat steel because it does still weigh a bit and you'd basically be making armor. I mean, unless that's what you're going for. But that's not the only support that we have in this corset. Under each of these brown strips, we have a piece of spiral steel boning. Spiral steel boning is slightly more flexible than flat steel. It can also move not in one, but in two directions. So as you can see, each of the channels that has some curve or multiple curves to it has a piece of spiral steel boning. This is also slightly lighter than flat steel, so it's more comfortable to wear in terms of weight. So that's what you can basically see here on this corset. Each panel has a piece of spiral steel boning on it that curves nicely with the body. It does shape a bit, but it doesn't force anything. Most people that think about corsets will first of all think about baleen or whalebone as a way of support. Nowadays, of course, we don't want to use real baleen anymore. So there are companies that have made synthetic baleen. This is a kind of plastic. And the nice thing about this is that it kind of behaves like actual baleen. Basically, it is flexible, as you can see. The nice thing about this is that with the heat of the body, it can actually shape. So if you make a corset fully with synthetic whalebone, it will, after a while, form to your body and become more comfortable. For example, you can also see that my piece is relatively curvy. This is not practical when I want to use it, so I can actually put an iron on it and with a very light heat, make it slightly more flat. Next up is not a corset, but a pair of stays. This is a Laughing Moon Regency pair of short stays and it's interesting support-wise because it has four types of support. We have two that we talked about earlier, which is the spiral steel boning in the sides. As you can see, again, this is a curved seam. So that's what spiral boning is good at. Then again, on the back, next to the eyelets, we have flat steel to keep the back straight. But you might have noticed all these little channels crisscrossing across the front. And these are corded, yes. Cording is a valid form of supporting corsets and stays. It's actually a form that has been used quite a lot in history. Cording makes fabric sturdier than just having two pieces of fabric together. The nice thing about cording, because well, it's just cord, it keeps it very flexible. Which means that even though it gives support, because it is still rigid, it will sit nicely still on many different shapes and sizes. Another nice thing about cording is, it's cheap. Another type of support on this pair of stays is the busk, which is wood. As you can see, in my case, it's just a paint stirring stick. Because this is short stays, I only needed a short piece of wood and this is nice and cheap. And also I can sand the edges nicely so it isn't as rough and won't damage the fabric. Wood was used historically quite a lot, mostly in the same places as you can find flat steel because again, it's flat and it keeps things straight. But that means that it doesn't really bend, so you do not want to use wood on bendy places. Something that I find to be a bit of a fun fact is that wood was sometimes highly decorated in busks. I mean, no one ever got to see them, but still they were highly decorated. I mean, if you want to do it, go ahead. Next up, we're starting to get into the slightly more unconventional materials, because 
Yes, you can use tie wraps as corset boning. If you are going for tie wraps, I would suggest using longer, especially wider ones than these, but I didn't have any other ones at home. I would also recommend cutting off the head, so the bigger tie wrap bit, so that you've got a single flat tie wrap that you can use as boning. These can pretty much be used instead of synthetic whalebone because, well, they behave pretty much the same. Nice thing about these is that they're a lot cheaper and in locations where synthetic whalebone is really difficult to get, these are definitely a good alternative. I've seen many people who make fully boned stays with these. And well, considering if you're making a corset or stays, boning is something that usually not a lot of people see. So if it looks good on the outside and you don't mind doing the construction with not all historical materials, tie wraps are definitely a good alternative. And last but not least, it's of course not just conventional materials that you can use to support a cord set. For example, instead of cording, I used EL wire in this one. It maybe doesn't show up that much, but let's see. There you go, now you can see the difference when it's on and off. Of course, when it's more dim, it's better visible. You can pretty much use anything in between cording and flat steel to support corsets. For this EL wire, I basically used it instead of cording. The EL wire cannot bend in really sharp angles, so I took out a few cording channels and just kept the general idea of the cording. But it definitely does give support to the corset. With unconventional or novelty items, you can do so much more than just a regular normal invisible support. Make it the centerpiece. Be creative with it. Then, aside from the materials that I just talked about, there were of course many different items used as support for garments such as corsets or stays, but that aren't really practical to use or aren't really ethical anymore nowadays. Think about materials such as real baleen, ivory or reed. So I shall not go into them into more detail today. I hope that in the past few minutes I gave you all a nice overview of different materials that you can use in support for corsets and stays and different ways that you can apply them. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out the construction of this pair of stays, because there I go into detail in how I actually applied all of these types of support. And with that, thank you all for watching, and see you guys next time.